Hello YouTube, thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate your time. Today I am rushed for time and I am going to be speaking a little bit quicker than I normally do in order to fit in everything that I wish to communicate with you, hopefully within 15 minutes. So let's get started. I refuse to exploit prejudice against another race for political gain. So if you're going to come at me with some empty claim of me playing the race card, well, you better bring the evidence. Fact. None of us know what really occurred as Zimmerman and Martin struggled. We can speculate, appeal to emotion, and form conjecture to the twelfth of never. This does not provide a picture of actuality. Nor do I think a man who freely has demonstrated his inability to be consistent in his accounting as credible. It sickens me how so many behave on both sides, as if the verdict was some national sporting championship. This displeasing display is pitiful and leaves an awful aftertaste in my mouth. Now, do not be a smart Alex. Start in on me with this black-on-black -black violence bullshit. I'll address that at another time. But let me say this. I am keenly aware of this activity. I will not allow it to be a diversion to what I am addressing, especially when I'm addressing a system of destruction not of my own creation. We have systematic expressions on a local, national, and global structure, yet we either ignore it or we render superficial lip service. I do not wish to waste your time or mine, so we won't go there. It is no secret that I am a firm supporter of a person's right to defend themselves. It is also not a secret that I have issue with the Stand Your Ground law. Before this incident existed, I do not think it is a law that needs to be eliminated. It does need to be placed under scrutiny by rational Americans and finely tuned so that it can benefit the law-abiding citizen. I do not see this occurring in the sunshine state. Many of us are not strangers to the special mixture of mental illness in Florida. Let's face it, no matter what racial or ethnic group you belong to, there is one thing which now has been programmed into the collective psyche, a particular attitude judged to be in conformity with approved usage. Proactive predatory behavior is now equated to the American way. Or maybe it always has been, and it's just being emphasized. Welcome to the unofficial hunt on anyone you deem to be a thug or someone you think inspires dread or fear. This is potentially dangerously unstable and will result in predictable occurrences. The Stand Your Ground law must not morph into something that provides a virtual license to blow another human being away. We must generate letters, we must make our voices heard, and we must communicate to the state legislature and the governor, and we should let them know that they do not need to repeal the Stand Your Ground law, but they do need to refine it. I will go so far to say that a national boycott on tourist travel to Florida by popular entertainers and convention planners is probably a good idea. Frankly, I do not see this happening. Therefore, we, the average Joe, must do all that we can. It is tragic that Marissa Alexander of Jacksonville, a person who has never been in trouble with the law, received a 20-year sentence for attempted murder when attempting to ward off an abusive husband, a valid method of defense. Her fatal mistake was firing warning shots inside of her home in August of 2010. Also, part of her downfall is the fact that she had the courage to retrieve a weapon and come back into her home instead of doing the expected and fleeing. Yet no one could deny she was attempting to stand her ground in her home. So, not only is there an issue with privilege of those who can use the law to benefit their agenda, but other concerns. There is also the mandatory minimal sentencing requirement that did not allow for extenuating or mitigating circumstances to reduce the sentence below the 20-year minimum. The law states that the victim of a crime does not have to attempt to run for safety and can immediately retaliate in self-defense. 
However, according to the judge's order, quote, there is insufficient evidence that the defendant reasonably believed deadly force was needed to prevent death or great bodily harm to herself. Oh, and, and while I'm at it, let me throw this in here. He also said, and that the fact that she came back into her home instead of leaving out of the front or back door is inconsistent with a person who is in genuine fear for her life, end quote. Funny how the judge was so quick to dismiss her valid claims and constitute her fear as disingenuous. What do you think she was doing, judge? Yet I witness no feminist groups coming to aid her. Where's the outcry from them? Silent. Crickets. Where was the NRA? This was not important enough for them, obviously. I am no longer a member. Fuck them. I wish that I could support my former brothers that are currently NRA members. I do support them in their right to carry legally and to protect themselves, but I cannot stand by some of the antics that have been employed by the NRA executives, let's say, or administration over the years. It is apparent that there is a disconnect between the NRA and experiences that determine how things actually are. Reality, I'm speaking about. The state of the world as it really is, rather than what they may think it should be or they want it to be. Plus, I could never support an organization that has a favorite son, which I think has proven himself to be a racist. That would be Ted Nugent, of course. If George Zimmerman is the embodiment of the gun lobby and its vision for America, then they do not speak for me. Now, social psychology has shown, and I will search for the statistics, that a substantial amount of people in many groups have a measurable internalized racial bias. Again, a measurable internalized racial bias against black people, the largest group being whites. This is significant due to their political clout and economic dominance. They are the majority. They have the majority influence. By the way, this is not always represented in some overt fashion, okay? This internalized racial bias that I make mention of. Even some blacks have been socialized to see blackness as a hindrance and whiteness as an opportunity. Now, my Republican associates, tea drippers, certain imperialistic birthers, and right-wing nutters do stop with the antics that the supposed dysfunction that we can see within America is supposedly a result of black culture. Hogwash. Hell, you are going to tell me that some white Democrat does not appeal to at least one anti-black stereotype? Huh, so what does this amount to? Well, do you remember Travis McNeil? He was a black man who, at the time, was 28 and suffered a deeply criminal demise. He was unarmed, never left his driver's seat, and was killed by a shot in the chest. This occurred at a traffic stop at North Miami Avenue and 75th Street in the, I think it was, Little Haiti neighborhood, yes. Still do not see what this amounts to. It amounts to lies generated by officers to save their skin. Can you guess what that lie was? Oh yes, he claimed he had reason to believe his life was in danger. From someone who didn't get out of the car, from someone who was unarmed, from someone who did not pull a weapon on him. Yet, he believed his life was in danger. You see, it amounts to resorting to deadly force versus de-escalating the situation or using proper tactics. Not to mention a deadly cocktail possibly composed of two parts racial bias with one part legal opportunity and then infused with any group of chemicals including epinephrine and norepinephrine that are produced in the medulla of the adrenal gland, which then is stirred with impunity. If we just examine how the police have operated, not only in this case, but others, we have to admit 
we are being given a clear message. Also, certain views which are surfacing due to a festering of racial tension on all sides, inability to assertively communicate on all sides, and a general social decay has made things crystal clear. It is open season on black males in America. Also, that only white life matters in America or those who are closer to a white pigmentation. This may not be the reality, but it is the projection which influences our reality. Now, some will claim blacks are as safe or as unsafe as they make it for themselves. That this is the reality in Florida and other places like it. And there is some truth in this. We do have a responsibility to ensure our own safety as black people within America, black law-abiding citizens in America, since so many people would like to think that we are criminals in waiting. Fuck you. Now, this should not be about participating within a cycle of fear or using what we would deem to be honest paranoia. This should be about common sense. I encourage every law-abiding black male, every, hold on, self-correction, what in the hell am I talking about, law-abiding black male? Forget law-abiding, okay? Forget that. That is a bad habit that I need to remove myself from. Prime example of being on automatic. Excuse me. We all know that not all laws are just, and it is not merely a matter of opinion, but proper reasoning. Practically, we comprehend law is deemed unjust due to the nature of the society in which the law exists and the nature of the government that enforces that law. Also, we cannot forsake the importance of context. Part of the issue appears to be our ineffectual use of the system of appeal. This is why we need. Yes, this is why we need not be afraid to debate and demand a law be modified or even tossed altogether. That said, I should have made reference to black men who are fair-minded, employs reason, values integrity, and in tune with their morals, which of course will allow confidence to be displayed in their actions. This is what I should substitute for law abiding, especially knowing the law, the rule of law, has been repeatedly used against the non-majority groups within America. Reasonable, rational black male, especially, and black female, to secure a sidearm first and a long gun second. Apply for your concealed carry permit quickly. I encourage them to train regularly and please seek out, if available, if you are able, professional instruction. This is important. This is highly important if you can afford to do so. And it's also important because firing at a fixed target may give you a false sense of proficiency, and you don't need that. I employ all of you to use sound reasoning when handling weapons and not to break the law regarding conceal or open carry. It is mandatory you get a good holster and use quality self-defense rounds. When owning a weapon, it is necessary that you understand and abide by safety rules. Learn the ins and outs of your weapon and keep it clean. And keep your focus about you, especially when you're carrying. You have to be highly aware. You have to check 360 often. If you don't do that, you may find that you will be placing yourself in a situation that will not be favorable for you. It is also a popular thought that blacks have run amok and never faced consequences within America, especially since the Civil Rights Movement. Of course, we know this is false. It is easy to submit to cognitive distortions and fallacy than to comprehend actuality. The thug label will gain a new level of support, especially by racist whites, those that are on the fence, and their lackeys. 
Blacks must not allow themselves to suffer due to our own hand. And part of that is if we appeal to emotion, we must keep ourselves in check and we must be responsible and we must understand that our actions will generate a reality that we may not like. So, to increase our chances at constructing a reality that would be favorable to us, watch what you say and watch what you do. This said, we must be consistently political, squarely face the issues inside and outside of our communities, family arenas, and pool our resources and create lobby groups. Lobby groups that are not ineffectual, Lobby groups that do not use the race card. Lobby groups that just put the issues on the burner so that we can see the smoke. We need to examine things. We need to take a different approach. I think the gay community has done a great job in working towards constructing a favorable environment within America. We should learn from their mistakes and from their successes when examining their model and simulate their tactics. Thank you for listening.